Welcome everybody to the 2021 Sugar Beet Advancement Planning Meeting. My name's Doug Ruppel with Hillishog. I manage both Michigan and Ontario growers. Today we got a short presentation for you. We're going to throw a couple extra things in that's not on the agenda. The first thing is we're going to have a little trivia. There'll be three trivia questions throughout the presentation. The first one to email me at doug.ruppel at hillishog.com will win some Hillishog swag. And also, for giving me five minutes, ten minutes of your time, I've got five minutes of pictures from local growers and producers. Behind me is the fruit of your efforts this year. Let's look at the fruit of the efforts from the research teams. Grab a cup of coffee and a donut and enjoy the presentation. Um, we're going to cover the Michigan Sugar OVTs, Sugar Beet Advancement Trials from 2020, Hillishog Strip Trials, our 2021 variety offerings and uh, agent update for, for everyone out there. Let's get started with a trivia question. What factory was I standing in front of or using as a backdrop during the opening of this video? Michigan Sugar OVTs, we're gonna look at the approved varieties for 2021 and the limited and special use varieties. And then we're gonna look at a a piece of information that the approved varieties for a two-year average of 2019-2020 data. You'll see here, this is a cover sheet from Michigan Sugar, um, 9865, 9879, 9908, 2238 NT, and 2240 is fully approved varieties. 2238 and 2240 both received full approval this year. They were limited last year. And speaking of limited varieties, you can see down there in the lower right corner, Hillishog has got another one this year, 2332 NT. Here's a list of the fully approved varieties that I just mentioned in not any particular one order, just how they were reported out by Michigan Sugar. You'll see 9908 there, super sweet, good sugar, um, good Cercospora, 2238 and 2240. Um, both very, very good varieties, very good performing varieties. Like I said, we've pulled a new variety out of our hat about once every year. Um, this year we had another one advanced to limited. It looks like every company had one advanced, one or two, but we had one advanced 93, or excuse me, 2332. And um, it's 104 on sugar per ton, 101 on sugar per acre, and 110 on Cercospora. Um, it's got great performance where it's needed and it offers good Cercospora as well. So that's our new advancing variety that we have. Here's a special a list of special use varieties that did not make criteria. And you can see them all here um, pretty much from one company, one, one breeding company, and they all suffer the same lack of, of performance and that's in percent sugar. Uh, varieties need 97.73% to get full approval or to be approved for planting. And as you can see, all of these are over 1% short on sugar per ton, or it equates to that they're lower on sugar. So again, just one thing to remind that they're all shorter on sugar than, than the other approved varieties. A look at the two-year data, like I promised here, you can see 9865 is in the top three varieties. Um, not much more than a, a $50 bill between those three. And 2332, our new limited approved varieties right in the middle of the pack after two years of data. 2338 is the next one down there. Um, that variety should really be up a little bit higher. For some unexplained reason in 2019, we got a bad uh, reporting year on that year. Unexplained, um, not pointing any figures at anybody, but our trials, it was a 110, performed real well and it just uh, had a hiccup for whatever reason um, in, in the OVT. So it's, it's dragged down a little bit on sugar and yield. Um, but when you look at two years worth of data, like 2018 and 2020, it's a very positive variety. And then our really sweet varieties, 2240, 9908, 9879. Now that very same data sheet that you were looking at, I've taken the liberty of highlighting this new special use varieties. They're special Cercospora varieties from, from KWS. And you can see that most of them suffer from the same um, deficits, and that's short on sugar per ton. I've sorted this out by sugar per ton. 
our 2332 elevates right to the top. And then what makes 9865 such a solid variety is a little bit heavier, but it maintains its sweetness. So very good full circle variety, um, which offers a lot of good attributes to it. But you can see if you're if you're going to pay more for a trait or, or something in a seed and then it's going to cost you more when you produce it on the sugar production side, uh, it's definitely not going to help with our goals of 3,300 and that's 30 tons of the acre and 300 pounds of sugar per ton. So these varieties, uh, it'll cost you a couple different times. Now looking at sugar beet advancement trials. Um, we're going to look at the average of six locations. I'm going to start in the west and go to the east. I'm going to look at Chaffin trials, Kearns over in Ontario, and then just briefly talk about the remaining trials. So the, the trial average of six locations, you can see 98.65 is second from the top, all very tight this year. Um, 22.38 second from the bottom. It's, uh, it, it's a nematode variety and um, it, it's it's got some good attributes to it but it's just a little bit uh, short on sugar the next one you'll look at here the chaffin trial um, that's over on the west side of the state had a little bit of disease to it but 98.65 performed real well all this information is supplied by sugar beet advancement and you can see um, they carry very good sugars as well as weight with these particular varieties and the last one we're looking at is Kearns over here in Ontario, Canada. 98.65 come in third place over there. Really sweet, 19.4 sugar. 22.38 moved up a couple clicks. Uh, good tonner, just, just not quite as sweet on the sweet side. Um, although we, we got a feeling that that variety is going to improve. A couple varieties that you don't see here that did real well in the OVTs is 2240 and 9908. Um, you guys that got to haul a long ways, you might just as well haul sugar. And that's where varieties like 9908, 2240, with good attributes to Cercospora and, and, and Rhizoctonia, um, they offer a good sweet um, hybrid. So guys that are paying for a lot of tons to, to haul a lot of tons, most guys want to haul sugar. And then the rest of the trials, the Wadsworth trial, the early and late trial, take a look at them, take a look at the Rhizoc numbers. I think the heavy nematode pressure um, had an impact and definitely had an impact when it comes to Rhizoctonia, um, but both varieties or varieties sorted out about the same um, at the early and the late planting of this trial. Shooty trial, just a real nice trial all summer long, looked really good since the time it was planted, very little disease at this location. The Schaffner Brothers file, trial, um, very, very tight trial, had very tight results. Good disease control, although it had some AF. The Sylvester Farms trial, it's a very interesting trial, had to be replanted, uh, a good range of nematode pressure in there. And I think it played host to more root diseases of, of all kinds, Fusarium, AF, and Rhizoctonia. The DLV farm trial, that's a very nice trial. Very little disease on the root and foliar. This is kind of our lighter soil. Uh, I don't want to say sand, but it's our lighter soil um, trial location. And you can see that variety sort out a little bit different. And then into my strip trials here, I guess I'm going to take a minute here and ask uh, another trivia question. So be ready to send an email to doug.rupel at hillishog.com. What is the oldest operating sugar factory in the United States? Okay, looking at strip trials here, this is a strip trial I planted with the Grkovich Farms. Um, we planted all five of our varieties in there. It was, it was an early plant, but also an early dig. And um, you can see in this particular trial with the early harvest, 2238 rows to the top. 98.65 about in the middle, 99.08 on the bottom. But when you look over to the far right and look at the percent sugars, um, your 99.08, your 98.79s are, are going to be the ones you want to dig early because they look like they carry the most sugar content. And then my last strip trial I wanted to share with you was Vader Farms, um, planted April 16th, harvested on November 2nd. As you can see, I know going into this, I was putting 2238 up against the heaviest beta variety there was. And, uh, you know, when we started harvesting and I knew I was light a couple tons, 
Um, but I'd really thought the sugars would be there because 2238 is a fully approved variety for nematodes and beta 1606 is a special use with lower sugar. And you can see the difference about three quarters of a point of sugar difference that brought us up enough and made more revenue or, or within $100 of revenue. Now it costs you something to haul extra tons. There's tear involved here, a few other things. I think um, what this tells you is a person should really try to diversify your farm and your farm acres. So in, in conclusion of the trials, Michigan Sugar, Brian Groove um, is a great leader there. He does a good job with all the trials. Um, all the trials were planted to stand this year. Very comparable varieties from all breeding companies. Sugar content was tighter this year. I think about the first week of permanent pile, the sugars jumped up and never stopped. Um, but it brought some of the other lower sugar varieties up a little bit sweeter than they normally are. Um, Hillishog, we're just proud to keep advancing varieties in the OVT. We're making and meeting all the criteria that's set by the seed approval committee. And again, just closing out on this one, special approved varieties are well short on sugar. Um, if it costs you more for a technology fee to plant it, and then you're going to plant a variety that's in superior on sugar, uh, it is, it's going to cost your pocketbook more than once. Um, sugar beet advancement trials, Daniel and, and Tom did a great job. Um, very tight results on all the entries. Um, the different locations shows the diversity should be a part of your planning. Nematode pressure continues to increase, and I think we've seen toads at every location, and each location needs to be looked at for your local results. Um, the Hillishock strip trials, they fall in line with the OVTs and sugar beet advancement, but there again, they send a strong message that you need to diversify your portfolio um, not only for your own farm, but for your, your factory's efficiencies. Tyler Ring, president of Hillishog Seed US. What are some of the needs here in Michigan? Well, a couple of the things that uh, the Michigan grower and Michigan sugar is looking for is, is really two main areas. Uh, sugar content is, is something that's increasingly important uh, for the Michigan grower and, and the, the sugar company, not only in, here in Michigan, but throughout the US. And then the second is, is Sacospora leaf spot. We've seen increase in Sacospora over the, probably the course of the last uh, three to four years, three to five years. Uh, and those are two of the, the critical areas that, that Michigan Sugar is looking for their growers to, uh, to try to improve on in, in the course of the coming season. Is that a strong suit for Hillishog? Hillishog is, is excellent in, in both of those, certainly the Sacospora piece, uh, uh, we have been industry leaders in, in the past of our Sacospora tolerance, um, and we, we do have a strong portfolio of Sacospora uh, tolerance in, in all of our genetics. Um, the, I think what's, where we see some of the differences is, is certainly from the, the sugar content. I think we're, we've been very pleased on the level of quality and juice purity that our hybrids are bringing as well. So to couple the Sacospora piece uh, with sugar content is, is right in line with what the co-op's asking for to, to maximize uh, sugar production in this area. For hybrids that we have to offer this year, 9865, 9908, 2240. And on the nematode side of things, we have 2238, 9879, and newly approved, limited approved for this year is 2332 NT. We look forward to uh, seeing these varieties out commercially again next year. When I first looked at this field shortly after emergence, it was about 100% stand. Every beet was here and it come real well. Um, shortly after that, early in June, uh, we had some heavy rains, anywhere from six to 10 inches of rain. And we're close to the Kalkalan River here and the river overflowed. This particular field was underwater for about seven days. And we're back here today not to brag up that variety, but just to brag up the strength of Hillishog and its disease tolerance. A lot of times when you run dirt and water over top of these crowns, it just opens it up for infection. And we're just surprised and very happy for the grower to see minimal death from, from all the disease and, and, and water movement that went through this field. 2238 is a nematode variety. It brings with it some very strong Cercospora 
and very good rhizoctonia. It, it also has uh, some good weight, good tons, and uh, we're real close on the sugar content on this. Not our sweetest variety, but it brings other attributes that every grower has seemed to love that planted it this year. We've got a good looking seed crop that came off this year. Uh, the, the fires didn't have very much effect, but it, it is a good looking seed crop that we have coming off for the Michigan sugar growers. Seed size and treatments, our sizes are remain the same, 2M, 4M, and an S2, which is more of an air seed. Treatments in the U.S., uh, the only difference is, is we don't offer tachygarin or it's not approved for sale in Ontario. Our base treatment is Vibrance Tach 20 and then Cruiser Max for an add-on for an insecticide Vibrance Tach 20. Uh, a couple of years ago, we added Tach 45 as we had a few areas uh, increasing with the Phanomyces pressure. So we, we increase the, the rate of tachygarin and we offer that with our vibrance. And then we also offer Cruiser Max Vibrance Tach 45. So in Ontario, you'd have your vibrance or your cruiser vibrance in the three sizes listed above. Now moving on to dealers, you know, I've been at this a long time. A few of these guys have been with me through the thick and thin of 30 plus years. Um, but saying that, you know, some guys uh, need to move on and are finding the retirement pastures. Got a, a young group of men here that joined us, men and women, replacing a few agents in your area. First, we have J&J &J Ag Solutions. We have Jake Bushy, who's just finishing up his uh, final semester at MSU. And we have Jed and Rebecca Bushy. They all farm together, uh, very active in the community and at their church. Rebecca, she runs her mouse operations at Bushy Farms. So these guys are, are very sharp. They pick up things real quick. Give them a chance on your farm and maybe they can learn something from you or, or maybe you can share information together. Next we have is Lutz Farms. They're located in Seaboing. They're taking over Steve Bone's old area. Joe and John Lutz, they're fourth generation sugar beet farmers. I've watched these two young men grow up as I've had trials next to their dad's farm for years off and on. And um, these guys always found their way out to a beet field. And I knew deep down back then that they were going to be sugar beet farmers. So welcome these guys on board. And then, of course, you know, my my other crew that's been with me a long time, we're, we're very proud and, and happy and with their performance out there. Talk about generations. You can't do this for 30 years and not find yourself in a shed someday with two and three different generations of growers. Um, when you've got the grandfather, the son, and the grandson there, those are pretty special moments, lis listening to different opinions, different methodologies, and different thought processes. Send us your story today. If, if you got a story about three or four generations, we'd love to hear it. We're on social media platforms this year, probably more important than ever. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, please like us on one of these and follow it. We don't post a lot of stuff. It's all growing information and meeting information, but it's a good platform to uh, keep yourself in tune across the United States and the different sugar beet growing areas. I'd like to uh, throw out the last trivia question. In what country is the most tons of sugar beets produced? Well, there you have it, folks. Short presentation and uh, all good information from third parties. Hopefully you find something in there to help you make your decision in 2021.
and not take for granted tomorrow there'll always be more just take a trip down a back road and you'll understand and you'll feel the beat from the heart of this great participation for those of you that purchased seed in 2020 thank you very much those of you that didn't we'd like to earn your business in 2021 please be safe take care of one another and happy holidays